Hi everybody! Today I'm going to show you how to set up our new monitoring solution with just a few MemSQL tools commands. You might be aware that we've recently updated the architecture of our monitoring solution. Specifically, we removed Kafka, we removed the requirement for the MemSQL pusher, and we also introduced automation and setup through MemSQL tools, our management utilities. If you don't have MemSQL tools, you can still set up monitoring through the SQL client, and you can see that in the next series of videos. But today, I'm going to show you how to set up this up using MemSQL tools, so you must have a toolbox binary on your machine. Before we get started, I want to quickly summarize the components of our monitoring solution. We have an exporter that collects data from the cluster. This scrapes information schema tables at an interval and produces a historical snapshot of your cluster status and, and other metrics. Then you have the database that actually stores the monitoring data. This includes pipelines that actually extract data from the exporter and store it into the database, as well as all the relevant DDL. Finally, you have the Grafana dashboards that surface all the data, which I'll show you as well. As you can see here, I have a small cluster running. It's two nodes, just a master and a leaf. So to start, we're going to enable the exporter. The exporter is actually shipped with the en engine, and it just needs to be enabled. We have a tools command called MemSQL Admin Configure Monitoring. Now, this takes in a couple arguments. By default, it requires a user and a password. This is the user that's going to access the database that's being monitored, which we'll call the source cluster. And you need to have access to the information schema tables. So by default, your permissions, you need, you need select on information schema, and you also need the show metadata permission. You can read more about permissions required for this command in our documentation. I'm going to simply use the user, the root user that I created, the distributed user I created when I first created this cluster, because I also know that that has elevated access. Great, now it's going to give me a confirmation for starting the exporter. The port by default is 9104, and I'm using my root password with the credentials. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. The operation was completed successfully. So now the exporter is running and active and is collecting data from information schema on my cluster. Now that we have the exporter running, the next piece is to actually configure the database that's going to store the data that the exporter is collecting. Now, you have a couple options here. You can store the monitoring data in the same cluster that you're monitoring, or you can store it in a different remote cluster. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to show you how to create a local monitoring database. And we're going to refer to the monitoring database as the metrics database or metrics cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and run the command that actually will configure the database for me, which is called MemSQL admin start monitoring. This takes a couple arguments. It needs the host where the master aggregator is running on, which in this case is just localhost. It also needs the user, a user and password that it can use to create DDL and store the data. The permissions required for this user are slightly more elevated than the exporter user. They need to be able to actually create objects like DDL, including pipelines and tables. I only have one user on this cluster, which is a distributed user, and I'm going to use that. And there's a couple other options you can configure here, which tell you how long to hold on to the, to the data in the database. Since, since you're storing data locally, we do recommend setting a retention period. It's specified in days, so I'm just going to put seven days here. Great operation completed successfully. So now I'm going to log in the database and make sure that all of these objects were created and that data is being collected on this cluster. Okay. 
Um, great. It looks like there is a metrics database, which means the tools commands did as we did as we expected. So when you use metrics. And it looks like there's data being collected currently. And we'll be able to confirm this further by looking at the dashboards. Great, so in a few easy commands, I have demonstrated that you can set up monitoring very quickly on a local remote cluster using MemSQL tools. Now we'll move into the Grafana portion. In our documentation, we have some links about how to actually install Grafana, and we link you to the Grafana documentation. So I'm going to follow the Grafana documentation to install Grafana on this same host. The first step is to, which you can look on the Grafana documentation, is to create a file to store some of the configuration for Grafana. So this I'm actually just copying directly from the Grafana documentation. So I've created a new file, and depending on if you want to use the enterprise version or not, you might copy different things into this file. I'm going to go ahead and copy the enterprise version information from the documentation. And as you can see, this shows information about some repositories and the keys required to access the repositories. So that's the first step for installation. And again, we've linked you in the documentation to all these resources. So depending on your distribution type, you can, you can install Grafana in a few easy steps. Now, the next step is to actually get the packages for Grafana, which I'm going to run sudo yum install Grafana, as I have a Red Hat distribution. It's going to ask me for a few pieces of information. Great, it looks like we're all complete. Now, per our documentation, we have a couple plugins that, that you need to download on Grafana in order to properly benefit from our monitoring dashboards. So one of them is the pie chart panel, which requires a restart. And the other is the multi-bar graph panel. Again, all of these steps you can copy directly from our documentation. And this requires a restart as well. Excellent. So we are all set with the installation. Now that we have Grafana installed, we can actually navigate to the dashboards. So in order to connect to Grafana, you need to input the host name of your EC2 instance, followed by port 3000. And all these instructions are listed on our documentation. And then you start out with a basic admin, admin user and password, which will then be, then will be requested to change, which I'm going to make it more secure here. And you're ready to go. And again, all of these steps are in our docs as well. Now, the first step you must take is to actually add the, your, the data source. MemSQL is compatible with MySQL Y protocol, so this is going to be a MySQL data source. And all you have to do is input your information about the database connection, so localhost 3306, database name is metrics, I'm going to use the same credentials that I use to set up the monitoring database, and I'm just going to make sure the connection is successful. It looks good. The next step is to actually add the dashboards. So I'm going to use the import button here, which is the plus sign. And we're going to import, I'm going to start with active session history, which shows our query information. Great. And as you can see, this shows the current queries that are running on the cluster, which databases they are running on, information about the resources that they use and are 
summarized activity of the graphs, of summarized activity of network, CPU, and lock time. This is just one of a few dashboards. I'll go ahead and import another one so you can see how simple this is. I'm going to use the import button, upload again, and I have these saved locally, but you can also put them on the machine that you're running them on. Going to upload the details cluster view. Great. So this is the some details on cluster CPU usage, the qu current query rate, memory use, workload management, and cluster events. And so as you can see, there are a number of dashboards you can import. I just showed you a couple. And these will be very useful in showing you the current status of a cluster, you can use this to monitor events that happen historically because everything is time series here, and you can also use this to monitor existing activities. Thank you for watching, and we hope this tool will help you monitor your database.